Right, so that's me set up. Remember, what I'm doing is I'm looking for the separate terms. And the terms are the bits that are joined by the ors. So I've got that term, that term, and that term. So looking at that first one, I've only got two inputs. So only A and B matter. So whatever C and D is doesn't matter. So what that means in practice is that I find the AB column and I go, right, put a 1 everywhere. All the way down that column. The values of C and D don't matter. And you can see when we read this back that, yeah, we'll say they, they're irrelevant because they change. Right, so that's done that one. So I'm going to tick that off. Right, not AB um, is the second column. Again, there's no C and D in there, so I'm going to fill the entire column in. Because C and D don't matter. Right, and then the final one, uh, C, uh, not C, D, is this row. Again, there's no A, B this time, so I'm going to fill the row in. So I'll tick that off. I'm going to, I can see that. It's like, whoa, yeah, I'm having that. So I'm going to draw and make it a curvy rectangle so that you can see it. So that is one term. Now you might think what I should do is pick just this pair on its own. But I can see a four. There is a four. So I'm going to overlap because that's going to allow me to do a bigger amount of reduction. So try and do them rounded because that will help. Right, so I'm going to start with this one here. Right, we're gonna. I'm gonna go across because I naturally just do the columns first. But you might want to do rows. But anyway, I'm gonna go across. We're looking for the ones that change. The ones that change, we're gonna say bye bye. So in this one, we've got A B, and we've got not A B. So A changed, didn't it? So you can, if you want, write down A changes, B. So, but really, we're saying right. The only thing that matters out of those two was B. Okay, B stayed the same. Now, this is the beauty of this large group. If we look on the rows of this, we can see we've got C, D. Then we've got not C, D. So C is irrelevant. Oh, but then we've got a not D. So those two don't matter. So actually, that's it for that group. It is just represented by the value of B. B determines what that group represents. The other inputs don't matter. Okay, right, so I'm going to do the final one. And again, I'm annotating this. I'm not just writing a B randomly on the page. Right, so this one, I'm going to go across. And I can see I've got A, B. Ah, then I've got not A, B, so A don't matter. But I've actually got not B as well. So A and B don't matter. But we should be able to see that straight away. Yeah, so the only thing that's constant is not C and D. Because it's in just a single row. So that will be not C, D. That is not our final answer. That's our working out. Our final answer is to write out that expression. So we join these terms with an or. So in maths notation, we have ended up with B or not C, D. If we want to write it in logic notation, we would say B or not C and D. Because we're so lazy in mass notation, we didn't even put the dot for the hand. It's accepted. No one wants to put more ink on a piece of paper. Right, okay, so that, that is our answer, which I'm going to underline. So both of those are our answer, just written in different formats. Right, can you now try and do Boolean algebra? Show the working. You know what the answer is that you're working towards. Can you do it with Boolean algebra? Okay, I know what I'm aiming at, but I can see C, not C, D, isn't going to work. So I'm going to look at these pair of terms, and I'm looking at common factors. So I can see there's a B, so I'm going to pull a B out, and that's going to have an and, really. And then in brackets, I'm, this part is A or not A. I'm going to write the full thing out. So I've just rearranged it, but this is quite interesting. 
So what I tend to do when I'm doing these, I might do something like that to show which ones I'm working on. So I'm now going to work on this. And I know that in the simple Boolean algebra rules, if I've got A or not A, then that's always going to be a 1. So that becomes a 1. So I've ended up with B and 1. Or not C and D. And if I and 1 with a B, then the only thing that actually matters is the B. I'm saying one side of the and is always 1. So if B is 1, the output will be 1. If B is 0, the output will be 0. So it actually that resolves into B. So I end up with the expression B, not C, D. Which is the same as the K map. If you cut your K map up, it's not going to help you. But obviously, you know. Right, okay, so next lesson, which I think is tomorrow, isn't it, in the nutty room? If I stop recording, I don't put 